what's up we are back for baddies caribbean episode five this episode pissed me off in a lot of ways <laughs> there was certain things that happened throughout the episode that aggravated me um there were certain people in this episode that made me proud and we'll get into that um please thumbs up the video if you are new if you're not new thumbs up the video if you're not new you already know i shouldn't have to tell you but if you are new, please thumbs up the video. Please drop comments down below. That helps me so much with my channel. It helps push me out, get new people to me so we can continue to have the conversation. And if you are new, subscribe because I'm going to be here. Like you clicked on the video for some reason. And if you're looking for this content, I'm going to be here doing it. So hit subscribe, join the conversation, turn the post notifications on. We go live every single Monday. Myself, Movie Bay, and I believe Legend will be with us on Monday as well we had january flowers last week go check that live out we'll probably have her on the big big episodes during the season but yeah jump in with us we like to talk to y'all um on calls through the chat do that as well but before we jump into this episode i had to bring this up because i saw it this morning i've been saying it since she got on the show gretchen and that's what i'm talking about her use of the n-word her reasoning behind why she uses the n-word all of that has never made sense to me. I'll never stand for it. I've always never stood for white people using that word. I will never stand for it. But one thing I hate more than an ignorant white person or a racist white person is a black raccoon. And when I say a raccoon, it's just the, the YouTube friendly word. And if you know, if you're from my walk of life, you know what I'm saying. And I can't stand when y'all get in the comments. I can't stand when y'all get in my comments and other people's comments in blog comments, making excuses for her using these words. So when she uses that word and y'all know, because y'all should know from the culture, like I'm pretty sure you do know and you're trying to make excuses as to why you don't care, but it should bother you. And the fact that it doesn't bother you is crazy, but we're going to watch something that you should feel like a fucking idiot because you continue to make excuses for somebody who continues to play in your face. And I know for a fact, if she ever saw you, she would call you that. And if she did, considering the way that you act, and if this if this message is for you, if you jump in the comments and you start trying to check me about it, you the hit dog that's hollering, and apparently it is for you. But if it's not for you, you're probably agreeing with me. But we're gonna watch this video that she put on her Instagram Live that people screen recorded and put on TikTok. I want to watch it. I have some thoughts and we will get into that before we get into the episode. So let's watch. Like I said, I'm probably blacker than Jayla. Fuck is we talking about? These bitches is straight up Oreos. I ain't gonna lie. Y'all bitches is telling me I can't say nigga, but y'all over here whiter than me. Sit your suburb. So y'all heard her sit here and say that she's blacker than Jayla. Essentially what she's saying is that she, for some odd reason, because she claims that she's from the hood, I've never, I don't, I don't believe that. But if she is from the hood, okay, whatever. But you saying that you blacker than Jayla because what, Jayla, Jayla is probably more educated than you. She carries herself to a higher status and speaks more eloquently than you try to speak. So in her mind, she feels because she's from the hood that she's blacker than Jayla. So if y'all idiots don't catch on to what she's saying, she's saying that because she's from the hood, she's blacker than somebody who's from the suburbs, which she's assuming that Jayla's from the suburbs. So she's essentially saying you have to be, you have to be from the hood to be black. If you're from the suburbs, you're not black. Like what are y'all defending? Because where you're from does not negate what your skin complexion is, what your skin color is, what you are. There's black people in the hood, there's black people in the suburbs, there's black people that are rich, living in gated communities. At the end of the day, the beginning of the morning, and at the end of the night, they are black. You are white. She likes to talk about how she's Puerto Rican. Yeah, you're Puerto Rican, but Puerto Rican is an ethnicity. It is not a color. It is not your race. You are white. You will never be black. Never. No matter. We're going to get into it. We're going to get into it because if she's the type of, because she's the type of person that'll go around calling people poor <laughs> calling you <laughs> and all this other stuff. And if she says that shit about y'all in your face and you sitting here caping for her, 
I ain't got nothing for you. I ain't got nothing for you. But just don't jump in my comments with the stupid shit. Because that's crazy. But that's all I got to say about it. Let me know what y'all's thoughts are down below. Because I think it's insane that people are still online making excuses for it. There was a dude in one of the Zeus T pages that was like, talking about unpopular opinion. I stand for her because she stood on all 10 because they told her not to say nigga. And she's still saying it. Like, what, what are you not? What is what's not clicking? Do you hate yourself? Like, I just don't understand that. But I'm done. I know y'all wanted to talk more about this, re uh, the recap of the episode, and that's what we're about to do. Let's go. Okay, so we get back from the beach, continued. Uh, Tommy pulls up on her horse, stopping the show. Natalie is sitting there talking. She done got all the way back by the beach at this point. Like, she's by the water at this point, talking about how she's going to knock that bitch in her shit. And I'm like, if you going to knock her in her shit, then do it then. Like, you sitting here talking about what you're going to do, go do it. So she's sitting there talking behind Jayla and Sapphire as well. And Jayla's sitting there talking about Natalie's going to whoop Tommy's ass. I said negative. Like, you can be friends with Natalie, but stop being stupid and stop being delusional. Like, if it comes down to it, a fair one-on-one -on -one without any interference and a fair, just a fair fight, I feel like Tommy would win. I do. And we saw later on what I'm talking about, but we'll get to it. But um, Biggie is saying that she invited Tommy to the beach and she's ready for Natalie's bullshit. And I was happy that Biggie did this because Biggie kind of pulled a Natalie on Natalie. And I, I really... This episode was a good showing for Biggie, and we're going to get into it later on, but I'm glad she did it. But Callie's introducing herself to Tommy. Tommy's over there talking to the replacements, talking to the new girls. They're kind of introducing themselves to her. Natalie is walking around the girls, like, in the back, just walking around them, talking shit, just talking that shit. It's just like, Natalie, you talking all this shit, and you know who Tommy is. You've beaten her in a fight already before. Why don't you just run up? Like, why don't you get up there and tell her to square up? Because you talking all this shit. She knows that you don't like her. You know that she don't like you. So why don't you get up there and do something about it instead of sitting there talking? Because you just watched everybody else fight. So at this point, you know you want to fight. Why don't you get up there and do it? But you got Gretchen now talking about, uh, she's pretty much talking tough to Jayla behind security, telling her to come here. Jayla says, what part aren't you understanding? The, fa the fact that you are not black and you continue to keep saying nigga, and you know you can't keep saying it? Like, what part about that is that that's just not clicking for you? Like, what is not clicking? And she says, every time you say it, I'm going to continue to knock you in your shit every single time. And I'm like, thank you. Do it every single time. Every single time. But Jayla says that she don't care how much black dick, how many black friends she got. You are not black, and every time you say it, I'm going to whoop your ass, bitch. <laughs> she put the emphasis on it. And I'm like, yes, what she said, no matter how much black dick you take, how much, how many black people you associate yourself with, how many black people you surround yourself with, at the end of the day, you are not black. They might be black, but you're not black. So that word should never come out of your mouth, period. And hopefully by the end of this, we don't have to keep talking about this because we are literally five episodes in and I feel like I've been saying the same thing every single week. But um, Jayla said it's simple math and it is just like, just don't say it. you don't have to say it. But Gretchen then talks about how she's been trying to talk to her, but she won't listen. Nobody will listen to her. So Jayla just says, quit saying it. I said, just, just, just that simple. Like, quit saying it. But she comes forward and tries to act like she's apologizing. And she says, like, I apologize if y'all feel some type of way about the word. I'm not coming at y'all this type of way. I don't mean it in this type of way. She only got one issue, and it's with Meatball, because what she did was some lame nigga shit. And I'm like... And what Tommy and Big Kiba did, Big Kiba threw her hands up. Tommy looked back like, what? Like, what are you doing? You're apologizing, but you still turn around and say it. And my thing is, people want to laugh because she's, and then she got in her confessional saying, oops, I fucked up. I did it again. You know what you're doing because you don't have to say it. Me, I say that word all the time. But guess what? When I go to work, I'm in a professional, in a professional environment. I know to stop myself from saying it because you can't you can't talk like that in certain places. Just like you as a white woman should not be talking to a bunch of black people, black women who have told you that it's offensive when you as a white woman are saying this. You yourself have said that you are not black. So why are you continuing to say it? So she's doing it on purpose. She's now disrespecting and playing in their face, which is why I feel like every single time somebody wants to hit her, it's justified and it will be justified. But Mariah Lynn is saying that she's trying to understand Gretchen, but she keeps saying the N-word. But I'm like, but you do it too, so you're the last one to talk. But the only difference between you and her is you at least know not to do it because you're scared shitless. Gretchen, I will say that. Gretchen, at the end of the day, when it comes to whatever, 
I don't believe she's scared of any of them girls, which is why she continues to do it. Mariah Lynn is scared, and she's a scary ass bitch, but we'll get to it. Security ends up pulling Gretchen away. And as she's doing it, like her and Meatball just going back and forth verbally, Tommy then follows behind security pulling Gretchen off. And she's asking if you out here calling people niggas. And Gretchen says, like, I'm Puerto Rican. Tommy says, and black? Like, are you Puerto Rican and black? Like, you saying you're Puerto Rican, but if you're not black, you don't have no business to be saying it. That's why she said, and black? She says, no, she's fully Puerto Rican. I said, there we go again. You literally denounced it yet again that you are not black and you continue to use it. And she says, and nigga is like bitch to her. I said, so if that's the case, then just say bitch. Like, if that's what it is, then just say that. Like, you know you're not supposed to say it. Granted, she keeps saying too, because this is what she said. She said, where I come from, it means nothing. Tommy, exactly why I love her. She said, but where we come from, black people, it means a lot. And as you see, that shit pisses people off. And you know it's a problem. I said, hello. Like, hello. Like, hello, wake up. But she's then saying that they're not letting her talk and they jumped her. I said, why don't you tell them why they jumped you? Why don't you tell her exactly why they jumped you? You said they're not letting you talk, but you didn't tell her the reason why they jumped me is because I kept calling them niggas and nigga, nigga, and nigga, and just keep saying it over and over and over again. But she then says that it's corny and um, don't make it seem like you're racist. Nobody's saying that you're racist, but then again, the way that you sit here and describe the reason why you say it, it makes you seem like you're racist because you sitting here saying you only use it when you're mad. We don't go around calling people niggas just because we're mad. Like black people saying nigga is a term of endearment. You saying out your mouth that you only say it when you're mad, that makes you look like a racist. Like, let's keep it real. But Tommy goes back down. She goes to uh, the beach where the rest of the girls are. And Natalie's sitting there talking about how she's going to end up drowning Tommy. And Mariah Lynn's talking about how she loves Tommy. Well, she doesn't She doesn't love Tommy, but she don't have an issue with Tommy. She says she's seen Tommy in spaces, obviously, because of the love and hip-hop connection. But she's cool with Natalie, and she loves Natalie. And she says she wants to stay out of the beef. She says she wants to stay out of the beef. But she continues to involve herself in some more beef. But we're going we're gonna to get into it. <laughs> we're going to get into it. But Tommy comes forward to Natalie, and as Natalie is popping her shit, she makes sure to back that ass up. Natalie continues to talk it. Tommy continues to come forward, and Natalie continues to back up. Because when it comes to some heads up, heads up shit, Natalie don't want it with Tommy. She wants to sneak her. But Natalie's still talking about how she's going to drown Tommy. And Tommy is standing around looking around and kind of just like not really paying Natalie too much attention. Because at this point, you can tell she don't really, she ain't phased by Natalie. Like she knows Natalie just doing all this. And Natalie's punk ass finds the opportunity to sneak Tommy when she's not paying attention. So she runs up and tries to swing. Of course, Natalie runs up with her head down. Again, she still has not learned how to fight. She runs up, swing with her head down. Um, and she starts swinging and she got her vape in her hand. So she's got a weapon in her hand too while she's swinging. Swinging with her head down. Tommy ends up getting her, starts out wide swinging with her right. She might have connected maybe two times. Um... Then she ended up grabbing uh, Natalie. Natalie's swinging, throwing her body everywhere. So when you're throwing your body forward, your head is down. You're not paying attention to what you're doing. So you're throwing your body forward, you're swinging, and your head is down. What happens? Natalie hits the floor. As soon as she hit the ground, Tommy got on top of her ass, grabbed her by her wig, was dragging her ass. Natalie is swinging, but she's not connecting. Tommy was manhandling her, getting her again. Tommy won that round for me. Easy. Easy. So they got separated. As soon as they finished separating, they squared up again. They then got locked up in a headlock situation. They both kind of like headlocked up, but Natalie's swinging, not looking. Tommy is still swinging and connecting. She got Natalie yet again. So this is 2-0. Tommy is whooping Natalie's ass. Natalie gets out of that headlock. Wig is gone. She's sitting there hyping herself up per usual because Natalie is delusional. Tommy still looks the exact same way that she did before. Um... Natalie said that she squared up with Tommy because she was popping shit about her husband and her family making up lies after lies. I said, Natalie, if y'all remember, this was what she's talking about was when the stuff with Curtis came out and Tommy literally was on Jason Lee's show talking about how this was happening and Jacob is gay and <laughs> lets the shit happen. I don't doubt anything Tommy's saying because it all came out to be true later on. So, um, Natalie goes by the cars and Tommy is doing her normal swinging at the cameras and stuff. Like, you know how Tommy get pissed and she started hitting the cameras and hitting the cameraman. So she's doing all that. Aubrey does not know who Tommy is. She started, I forget what she called her, but she just don't know who Tommy is. 
Natalie is in the car. Tommy is trying to get Natalie because she sees that Natalie has scratched her. And Tommy's walking around with security, looking everywhere for Natalie. Natalie then screams, Tommy, where are you going? So Tommy goes right over there to her. They start going back and forth behind security. And Tommy got a SWAT, like she got a squad, like a SWAT team of security, like surrounding her. Natalie got like one behind her, but there's open space for Natalie. If Natalie really wanted to run up and do something, she could have did it. But Tommy was the one that was blocked. If Tommy wanted to do something, she couldn't really get a chance to do it. This is where I realized the setup was happening. So Tommy, uh, what happened? Tommy got, like I said, she got a side. So Tommy ends up randomly going up. And there's this white security guard on the side, a security guard on the side. And of course, Tommy ends up slapping the shit out of him. So when she slaps him, what does Natalie do? She just decides to take an opportunity to kind of sneak her because Natalie does not want to fight Tommy head up. Every time she tries to get Tommy and every time she does end up getting Tommy, it's because she's either getting to sneak her where she's not paying attention or she's getting help. And we'll get to that later on. But um, Natalie's talking about how do you want to hug? Tommy's walking forward. Natalie's still walking back. They then start fighting by the car. There were no cameras over there. None. They finally get the camera over there, and you see Natalie got Tommy in a headlock, and she is uppercutting. Natalie was uppercutting good. But I had to watch it back. I said, let me rewind this back. Let me watch it in slow-mo. Y'all know I don't normally rewind on the first time. I rewound, watched it back. After I heard Tommy say, so you sit here holding my hands, I ran it back. I was fully expecting to not see somebody holding her hands back because Tommy in the past has had an excuse as to why she was not performing the way we thought she would run the shit back. You see Tommy, Natalie got Tommy kind of head locked up, but Tommy's hand is like her arms are like right here. Natalie's got one over here, which is her left arm, the right arm, the black security guard. He's got Natalie right here, but he's not really locked up with Natalie. He's got his other hand intertwined with Tommy's right, and it's literally like in his wing, in his arm. So Tommy can't do nothing. So they're allowing Natalie to get her one because she got her ass beat in the first two lines, in the first two rounds. So they literally set Tommy up to let Natalie really get, do her in, and she did. I will give her that she did, but it's you don't get no points for that because you got an assist, and you don't get points for knocking somebody shit in when you didn't do it fair. So, of course, Natalie's excited about it. Tommy's pissed off. She walks off, and um, her nose is bloody, like, because Natalie was getting them uppercuts in. She actually got a chance to do it because she got help. Like, if you don't connect with them uppercuts with help, Natalie, you need to hang it up for real, for real. But she's pumping it up with Jayla and Scotty. Jayla's proud, talking about how she whooped her ass, and yada, yada, yada. Like, Jayla, you know, I love you, but Stop. Stop. Stop dick eating. But Tommy's nose was bleeding. Aubrey comes in saying that Natalie had kicked Tommy's ass. Natalie's knuckles are bleeding. She keeps talking about, oh, I had to give her these uppercuts, these uppercuts, these uppercuts. Natalie, when she when she learns a word, <laughs> she will wear that shit out. But she then starts talking about how she beat the shit out of Tommy. And I'm like, but you got help. Like, you don't get points for that. But you was getting your ass beat. You was getting handled without any assistance. But back on the beach, we get to Siki. Tsiki goes over to her sprinter where she's saying that she owes Jelly Bean an ass whooping from uh, Bad vs. Wild. She had told her to stay away from her husband and her husband's section where she was standing over there next to him when she told her that she did not want her over there and she needed to move and she did not move. Tsiki is now wanting to eat. Jelly Bean overhears that she says she's confused because she thought it was over and she said that she did not want Tsiki's dude. Tzatziki is now pressing her, and Jayla is saying, or not Jayla, Jelly Bean is saying that Tzatziki had said, like, it was her bad, like, it was my bad, I was drunk. Tzatziki saying, no, I never said that shit. Like, you were standing next to my nigga, and I was not okay with that. Tzatziki, I love you. I do. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. But this is not worth, this is not, this is not, this was not worth it. Like, this is not a reason to want to fight this girl. Because she's standing next to your boyfriend or your husband, whatever the fuck he is. Standing next to somebody is enough for you to want to go hit somebody. Like, Tzatziki lost me right here. I still like her, but she, I was not on her side in regards to it. I'm not even on Jelly Bean's side, but I'm just, I don't see the point in her wanting to fight her over this. But here's why I started to really get pissed off. 
Mariah Land's punk ass, as they're going back and forth, she decides she wants to run up and hit Jelly Bean. She runs up and hits her. Let Tzatziki have her own fight. If Tzatziki wants to fight, let her fight. So then Sapphire says, don't let Mighty, uh, Mighty Mouse, talking about Mariah Lynn, hit you and not do something. Because they literally pulled Jelly Bean away and she didn't go back to try and fight Mariah Lynn. Which I agree with Sapphire. You don't let nobody, ain't nobody going to be able to get, nobody's going to be able to touch me without me not touching you. I will not leave the premises until I get my hands on you after you don't put your hands on me. But Mariah Lynn is sitting there barking how she's saying that she don't give a fuck. Ain't nobody fighting her bitch, talking about Tzatziki, without coming through her first. Bitch, who the fuck are you? Who are you? Nobody is scared of you. Nobody pays you any mind because ain't nobody worried about you. Like, who are you? And then she's sitting there saying nobody's coming through her friend. And unless they fight her. But when Tzatziki wanted to fight E.T., you damn sure did not step up to try and fight her first. Because you knew damn well E.T. would have whooped your ass, which she later did do. But you knew after watching Callie beat Jelly's, Jelly Bean's ass and expose that Jelly Bean can't fight, you then got pumped up and was like, okay, this is my chance to now get a fight in to then try and show out in front of the rest of these girls, let these girls know I'm not to be tried because I want to get an easy fight over somebody who can't fight. You are a punk. You're a loser. That's why nobody likes you, Mariah Lynn. Nobody likes you. I don't like you at all. Never will. Like, she's a loser. It's like she's so quick to fight to seek these battles. No one to seek you don't need no help, but you did not jump in when Bianca was getting uh, ran up on by heaven. But that's supposed to be your best friend. Like your best friend. You've known her longer than you've known Tzatziki, but that's your best friend. And you claim that you jump in to defend your friends, but you didn't jump in whenever she got ran up on when she came in here fighting your battles because you 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 a clown chaser. Like she knows Tzatziki is popular. So she wants to attach herself to Tzatziki. Only difference is the people that watch and actually like Tzatziki, they realize what you're doing. But she's talking about in her confessionals too how Watch how you talk to her friends because she's a real ass bitch and she will go for any of her friends. But like I said, she did nothing for Bianca. She did nothing for Sapphire. Like Sapphire's supposed to be your friend too, but you did nothing there. Like you did nothing for Bianca. But Tzatziki's still talking shit to Jelly Bean. Tzatziki says she'll run her mouth because she can back it up. That is true. You can, but this is not worth it. She's sitting there screaming how she's an animal. She'll go to war, go to war, yada, 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 yada. So they finally get the bitches on the car. They go back to the house. The next day, we get the scene with Meatball and Biggie. They're outside rolling up. Natalie and Slim, they come outside. Biggie is saying that she was up all night because Natalie, Jayla, Sapphire, and Slim were up blasting music all night. So Biggie is pretty much saying, like, they have not gotten to a bag yet either. Like, we're on episode five. There's no bag. Where's the bag? Natalie's sitting there saying, you know, as it's been your third season now, that we can't get to a bag unless the foundation is set between the girls. Yada, yada, yada. Bullshit. But Biggie said last night was a lot, which is why she invited Tommy. And Natalie says, why would you set your friend up to get beat up like that? Yeah, which, uh, now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, yeah, you, Biggie, you should have known that security was going to find a way to let Natalie get a win in. So maybe Natalie is right with that statement. But they're talking about her entrance, how Tommy came in. Biggie was pretty much like propping it up like she did that shit, which she did. Natalie saying that she lived for Tommy getting her ass beat up and down the beach. I said, where? The only time Tommy got hit was when you was over by the car. If anybody was getting their ass beat up and down that beach, it was your big ass. That's who was getting beat. But Biggie said there were two fights, so we don't know who won the whole fight. I said, thank you, Biggie, because the fights that Biggie saw, Natalie got your ass. You got your ass whooped. Tommy only got beat over there in the car whenever she was getting literally tag teamed by you and security. But um, Natalie keeps saying Tommy's knotted up. We didn't see that. But Natalie said that she gets that Biggie is cool with Tommy, but that's why she don't fuck with Biggie because she fucks with the op. Which I wanted to make that a point to say because later on it's going to come up and I have a point to make with that. But Biggie then says that they can discuss the rest of the fight, but she's going to go discuss the first fight with Tommy. So she's getting ready to get up and Slim and Meatball sitting over there eating Natalie's dick. And Biggie is in her confessional saying, like, they don't even know Tommy, but they sitting over here just dick eating Natalie. I said, Biggie, you talking it. Like, this is Biggie's episode for me. Everything she was saying, I was agreeing with. But Biggie gets up and she's saying that she's going to go talk and go call her friend Tommy to go talk about it. And Slim is sitting there egging Biggie on with Natalie. And Biggie tells Slim, I want you to keep that energy whenever my friend comes. Talking about Tommy. I want you to keep that energy when she comes. I said, exactly. Exactly. And Slim said, not the same friend that said that she don't give a fuck about you. And I was like, ooh. 
<laughs> but then again, Biggie is still right because at the end of the day, Tommy apparently is still cool with Biggie from what we see. But Biggie says, but you don't even know her. And Slim said, I don't have a problem with Tommy, but I think it's funny. And I'm going to laugh if it's funny. I understand that, but you wasn't just laughing. Like you could have just been sitting there laughing, but you were sitting there talking shit, kind of like egging Natalie on. So at that point, it did seem a little bit too much, which like what Biggie was saying, you was looking like you was dick eating Natalie. But we get a scene with Scotty and Diamond the Body. Scotty's outside talking to Diamond, saying like she don't really get to see her a lot, but when she does, Diamond the Body is kind of standoffish. And Diamond was like, yeah, it's because of the beef with Team. So Scotty is now trying to be herself like scotty we're on episode five i'm probably gonna say every single episode if she continues this way i'm starting to like scotty crazy crazy but i am because she's being herself she's being genuine this is the first time she genuinely seems like she's genuinely being scotty like she's trying to make things right she's not doing too much she's not trying to get camera time by wanting to fight and prove herself like this is the scotty i like but um she said diamond the body said that like we can squash it, but I got to avenge my wig. And she said she loves her wig. She even names her wig. She called her wig Ginger. But Scotty said, but can y'all just talk? And Diamond the Body's kind of like 50-50 with it. She said, I want to fight, but I will talk. But Scotty goes to go bring them together because she knew that Tink was outside. So she goes over there. Tink looks so much better with makeup on. <laughs> she looks so much better with makeup on. But you want to know why? Because it highlights the fact that she actually does bleach. Because her makeup is matching the shoulders is matching her actual skin complexion down here. Cause as we know, the face is like Heather gray. <laughs> like it's crazy when it's bare face. So you can tell she's bleaching, but Scotty asked what the beef is. And she's like, it was, is it just from the auditions? Tink says that she tried to square, uh, pretty much spare her talking about diamond, the body, but diamond, the body went online and was talking shit, making diss tracks. Scotty asked, like, if she did it. And Diamond said, yeah, I did do it. But I'm a professional. She's like, I can punch Tink in the face and still go to the club and be good. Tink said, but you sitting here disrespecting me. And she said the only way that she would leave this little girl alone, talking about Diamond the Body, is if she apologizes. Diamond's like, I'm not no little girl. And Tink was like, you just going to keep playing. And you keep playing, I'm going to keep playing too. So Diamond the Body says that I did you a favor, bitch. And I'm like, she's right. She gave you, she got you on the show. Because y'all got a storyline. We was talking about this in the live last week. They came in with a pre-existing storyline. That just makes it so much easier for producers. Of course, they're going to put both of them on the show because they already beefed at the reunion or at the auditions. And that's a storyline that can carry on into the show. So she essentially is correct. She did low-key help you get on the show. But um, Diamond then says it's not completed. Well, actually, I might have skipped some. Uh, Scotty said that Diamond the body, um, she pretty much asked her, like, did you start it at the reunion? And she pretty much said, yeah, and Diamond the Body was like, not Diamond the Body, Scotty said that Diamond the Body did start it at the auditions, and Tink is pretty much standing down because, like, she did start it with her, and at this point, Tink is saying, like, I will apologize, if you apologize, I will stand down. And she feels like that's a reasonable reason to kind of dead it, which I agree, but, I mean, I see Diamond the Body's side, too. But Diamond said it's not completed, and it will never be completed, just like your bleach regimen will never be completed. <laughs> Diamond Diamond got a mouth on her and she was really tearing Tink up and Tink could not say nothing back about it. She could not say nothing back about it because it was true. But Tink is talking about you're dismissed and I'll never forget you. And she, or she said, I'll never forgive you and you're not getting your look back or your wig back, even if you do apologize. And Diamond Abadi said, like, how are you not going to forgive me? I got you on the show. And then she then tells her to go finish her bleaching regimen. Make sure to get your eyes, lips, and them knuckles, bitch. I hollered when she said that because there was a TikTok. I'm, if I can find it, I might insert it. Diamond, you can see the the, the difference. In, not Diamond, Tink. You can see the differences in her skin complexions. But when you look at them knuckles, them knuckles tell the truth. Them knuckles was black, which lets you know she is bleaching for sure. But Scotty said, like, if they want to keep fighting, do it. But why keep dragging it on? Diamond says, like, how can I hate on a bitch that don't even love herself? How could you love yourself when you sitting here wanting to change your skin complexion and change your skin color? I said, no lies told. Tink ended up walking off into the house. Next thing we get Callie and Dia at the bar. Callie is beautiful. I love Callie. I really, really do. The only thing that I don't like is how she's still cool with Gretchen to this day and laughs about her saying the N-word. It's crazy to me. Crazy. But I do like Callie, but I just don't like that. 
But Callie's trying to make a friend because the rest of the girls are scared to talk to her. Callie said that she's been kicking it with the reserves, getting to know them. And she says, so when Jelly switched up on her at the beach, she was thrown off by it. And Dia was pretty much saying that she fought Gretchen because she had to catch her slipping. But when Nunu ran up on her behind her back and was decking her and her shit, she didn't say that, but I did because that's what was happening. <laughs> but she was confused as to why she came at her from behind when she could have just pulled up up front. Dia, we already saw what happened when she pulled up on you up front. You didn't swing not one time. You was getting your face beat in. Like, you can't fight. Why would you want to continue to fight with somebody like Nunu? But Callie said that she don't think that it's personal. It's all about her getting a spot to get in the house. Hello? Callie is smart. She knows. But Callie says, like, it's essentially it was like the replacements versus the bitches to get in the house. And Dia said, like, there's a, she's there to represent. She's Caribbean. Like, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. We know. We know. But she said she's not finished with Nunu. I'm like, you need to be because she already finished it with you. But she said, if she don't apologize, it's always going to be a problem. I said, but you're going to always get your face beat in if it's always going to be a problem. Like, you don't want to fight her. And then she ends up fighting her next week. We're going to see it, but it's crazy. But Callie says she's looking to have a talk with Natalie to kind of figure out where things went left to see if it um, if they can actually bring it from left to right. And she said, if it don't happen, she ain't tripping about it. Like, it is what it is. But she said, Natalie is old and she needs to go ahead and turn her chips in, a.k.a. like, give it up. Like, I'm, I'm trying to take over your spot. So um, after that, Natalie, Sapphire, Jayla, and Scotty, they're heading out to go on their nature walk, which is the last scene. And I'm pulling up my phone right now because my iPad might die and I might need to pull this up. But um, the reserves, Aubrey and Bianca will meet them there. Gretchen is not coming, thank God. So they get there to their van. Scotty is hoping to pretty much bond with the girls instead of fight. Tink, Slim, Meatball, and Dia get on their van. Diamond the Body comes out solo. January Flowers brought it up in her recap saying how Diamond has literally had her own solo scenes every single episode, which when she said it, I was like, yeah, let me pay attention to it. She did. She came out solo and she ended up getting into the bus with Natalie and her crew. So she's in that band with them saying like it didn't end well. Well, Natalie saying that she knows it didn't end well with her and Tink that night. And Diamond Body said, if you didn't end it, we would have kept going because I would have had more. I wanted to go more rounds. And Natalie said, it's clear that y'all are not best friends, but y'all been in the pool together. Y'all been cordial. So, like, what's the point in continuing to drag it? Diamond says she's going to keep fighting every single day because she just don't like Tinkabella. So, Scotty said, like, I don't give a fuck. Like, at this point, we don't care about the Tink beef. All I keep hearing from you is Tink. I want to get to know you. I said, you got a point, Scotty. But Diamond of Body is saying that Slim and Dia are dick riders. Um, and now her beef with Tink has now spread to them two now because the beef between her and Tink should be between her and Tink. I said, you valid. You're right. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, what do they have? Like, you just met Tinkabella. Let her have her own beef. You stay out of it. If it's a jump situation, then that's when you can jump in. But like a one-on-one -on -one beef, there's no business. There's no reason for y'all to be even involving yourself in it. So I agree with Diamond. But um, Tink is on the van pretty much saying that Diamond Body knows she needs to apologize and she will apologize because she's already uncomfortable in the house. Nobody wants to give her respect until she does apologize. So they ended up arriving to where they were going to be at the trail. Aubrey and Bianca have now joined them. And Aubrey is excited to have a normal day, be around the animals, be around nature. Natalie is saying that she wants to make sure that everybody um, got to come, get some fresh air, do some type of activity, which is good that they're finally doing an activity. Like we've been saying this for seasons, like do activities. And which is good because they're in these different countries now and hopefully they will continue to do different activities. I want to see all these different countries. I've never been to Barbados. I want to see it. So um, and Natalie then pulls them all together as she always does. She has to talk. So she's talking about her bullshit saying that she knows everybody still got their beef, um, but she hopes that they can come together and do these type of things, talk it out and just like woo saw. So she feels that it's important for the main cast to get to know the replacements even though not all of them will be joining the main cast, but she wants to get to know them. Heaven is in her confessionals and she's annoying as fuck. <laughs> she is annoying. Her voice is annoying. I think that's what's essentially really making it annoying, but she's annoying. Heaven is probably the one now that I really could care less about seeing. Her voice is aggravating, but Biggie, Tzatziki, Callie, and Mariah Lynn's punk ass are with Tommy. So they're not with them. And Natalie is saying like they're going to be breaking off into groups. Diamond the Body, Sapphire, Tink, they're going to be going with her. Of course, Natalie being messy, decided to bring Tinkabella and Diamond the Body and put them in the same group. 
they caught on to it immediately. Scotty, Bianca, and J.O. are a group leader, so they get to pick their groups. Scotty takes Jayla, Slim, Dia, and Meatball. Bianca takes Aubrey, Wendell, and Jelly Bean. And Aubrey was cracking me up because she said, I will humble myself and let Chicken Noodle Soup, a.k.a. Bianca, take me on a walk. And she said, I hope that she gets she, she keeps her spit to herself this time. I said, exactly. But J.O. ends up taking Kiva, Nunu, and Heaven. Heaven was hoping to go with the other girls to get to know them. Essentially, she wants to try and find a way to get in that house. But Diamond the Body says that she could put her wig. She pretty much asked Natalie if she could put her wig in her purse, a.k.a. I'm about to fight. And Sapphire's like, no, you don't need to do it. But they ended up breaking off. I'm about to move over to my phone now because my iPad is literally about to die. But uh, Natalie is now saying that she um, really likes Tinkabella and she likes Diamond the Body. Diamond says that she needs to avenge her wig. Like, that's just what it is. I need to avenge my wig, a.k.a. I need to fight Tinkabella. Sapphire says it does not need to really continue, but, like, you're pretty much saying that it has nothing to do with the auditions. It has to do with the wig. Diamond said, no, it's about the wig because she whipped the shit. She ripped the shit into 20 different pieces. Tinkabella said, damn, well, I should have did it into 40. I said, here we go. <laughs> Tinkabella said, you snuck me and you mad because I just fought you about it. Like, you started it. And now that I finished it, you want to continue. Diamond then says she wants to continue to go more rounds. Tinkabella says, like, you got to pay me to fight now. Diamond said, yeah, because you need the money. <laughs> Diamond got a mouth on her. But Tinkabella said, like, you started it with me. You're mad. Diamond said, yeah, I am mad at you because you don't love yourself. Because you keep putting them chemicals together, bleaching your fucking skin, and just trying to turn your skin different colors. I said, ooh. Because <laughs> she getting her. But Sapphire said, you can't be mad at the chemicals. Diamond said, yes, I can because I'm dark-skinned. <laughs> that was so funny to me. But J.O.'s group, they're walking around. I like J.O., I like Nunu, and I like Big Kiva. Nunu was saying that, there go her baby daddy, talking about A.B. Here we go again, talking about A.B., but this one was funny. This time was funny because she was pointing at one of them animals. Um, but J.O. deemed her having Nunu and Big Kiva as the hit squad, which I'm like, yeah, they the hit squad because they won their fights. But J.O. is pretty much asking them why they think they haven't made it into the house. They feel like they've done enough. Like, they all won their fights. They went in there and stood on business. They feel like they should be in the house. We get to Aubrey's group. Aubrey is the voice of reason. Besides Jayla, she's the voice of reason. It's crazy how the whitest white girl is the voice of reason. One of the most woke ones on a cast full of black women. But Aubrey pretty much says she's curious about everybody's opinion with the Gretsch shit. Wendell says that she's cool as fuck. But she's a Puerto Rican girl from the hood. And where she's from, they allow her to talk like that. So she's used to it. I said, and that's what a lot of people have been saying online. She's used to it. That's what she talks. Does it make it right? No. Just because she's used to doing that don't make it right. It don't make it right. So she's Puerto Rican. And this is what Wendell is saying. She's Puerto Rican and she looks like a white girl. No, she don't look like a white girl. She is a white girl. She is. But she's Puerto Rican, and now that she's on baddies, they're forcing her not to say it, and it's weird. How is it weird that black people that know the history behind that word are telling her not to say it because it's triggering? Because that's shit that has trauma. Like, they probably experienced being called that. I, like I said, I've never experienced being called that, thank God, because I would be in somebody's prison. But I know the history behind that, which is why I don't want nobody ever saying it in my presence if you're not black. Why is that so hard to realize? And then we ended up finding out, too, that she's saying that she's from the Bronx, talking about Wendley, and she's black, but she's Dominican. My sister was like, the butt Dominican, that, that shit is not cool either. Because it's like, yeah, you're right. Because like I said, black people, Dominicans are black. You shouldn't be saying I'm black, but I'm Dominican. You should say I'm black and Dominican. Like, I'm a black Dominican. Not black, I'm black, but Dominican. It's like what my sister was saying. It's like, you can't just stand on the fact that you're black. You have to be something else. That something else makes you a little bit better. Why can't you just love the fact that you're black? So if you can't just love the fact that you're black and just say that you're black, and I'm black and I'm Dominican, but I'm black at the beginning of the day, you don't need to be saying it either. But Aubrey says, so you're both. I said, right. She's both. She goes, no, I'm black. But the thing is, I grew up in the Bronx and I'm allowed to talk like that. Yeah, because you should you should be able to say it because you're black. But Aubrey says she don't like how they're pretty much making excuses and saying it's okay for Gretchen, her white ass, 
to be saying nigga <laughs> and it makes her uncomfortable aubrey the white girl said out of her mouth that it makes her uncomfortable that these women are literally saying it's okay for Gretchen, another white woman, to be walking around here saying the N-word. Aubrey. Because Aubrey, Aubrey's smart. Aubrey's not stupid. She's not ignorant. Aubrey knows that that shit does not fly and should not fly because Aubrey grew up around black people. Aubrey got into Danny Decane when she, I want to say she was 18, 19 years old. So she was a baby, fresh out of high school. She was around that man Diddy. But Diddy is black, about black as black can get. Around a bunch of hip hop culture, a bunch of black culture, she knows what is right and what is wrong. She knew not to ever come out of her mouth saying that. So why is it so hard for Gretchen and these black people to realize that that's not okay? For Aubrey to be the one to be the voice of reason, that's crazy. But she said, the thing is, this is what Aubrey said to them. The thing is, they turned to her and told her, please stop saying it. And that was her chance to make it right by saying, yes, you are right. But she continued to go on calling them niggas. And that's why they got in her ass. I said, Aubrey, you better talk about it. Talk about it. So we get to Scotty's group, which is where we ended finally. 42 minutes, y'all. I've been talking. This is a long recap, which is why I hope we are done with this N-word. Like, I don't want to hear no more. Scotty's group, Scotty's pretty much asking them how they feel about the replacements coming in to take spots. Slim and Meatball saying they're not getting their spots taken. Jayla says they might try and size y'all up because y'all are the new ones. Everybody else that has been in the main house are actually people that have been on TV before. So essentially, she's saying that they might think that if anybody's spot is secure, it's the ones that have actually been on TV. So they're going to come for y'all. So what are y'all going to do about it? Meatball says then nobody's going to take my spot. Nobody's going to take my spot. But then she says, I want to ask you a question. What's with you and Biggie's beef? She's saying that you're bullying her. So why are you bullying her? I'm confused. I don't like the fact that you punched her and you're trying to make it seem like y'all are cool. She then says, how would you feel if somebody bullied you? Jayla said, a bitch can't bully me. I said, hello. <laughs> hello. I said, that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like even though people get bullied, I personally feel like even what I said with T last season when she got bullied, Smiley was lucky getting bullied. But this is all going to factor into what I'm about to say. What Jayla essentially is saying. You as a grown adult, I feel like grown adults, you can't be walking around saying you're getting bullied. Because you as a grown adult, you should have a, you should have a voice. You should be able to stand up for yourself. I will stand up for somebody who I feel like is being targeted and being outnumbered for no reason. I will. But you as a grown adult, you should be able to stand up for yourself. You have a voice. You are grown. Letting somebody punk you, letting somebody disrespect you, that shit is not, this it should not fly. You're not a kid. If you were a kid, that's one thing. You don't have a voice. You're scared. You're a grown adult. Nobody should ever pump fear in your heart to where you feel like they can literally treat you any type of way and you just sit there and let it happen. That's what Jayla's saying. Can't nobody ever punk me. And I agree. Can't nobody ever punk me either. Can't nobody ever bully me. But um, Jayla said in her confessionals, Instead of trying to press me, talking about uh, meatball, why don't you get both sides of the story? Because you're not about to sit here and disrespect and try and punk me and make me look like I'm a pussy. I said, thank you, Jayla. Thank you. And I'm happy because a lot of people online thought that Jayla was going to get out here and get punked because she was looking at meatball and didn't say nothing. She was looking at meatball exactly the way I thought she was, laughing, looking like she's trying not to laugh because, like, bitch, what are you doing? But meatball is sitting there screaming over Jayla, trying to overtalk her. Saying like, bully me, bully me. And Jayla and Meatball going back and forth. Jayla's trying to get a word in, but she can't really get a word in because Meatball keeps trying to scream over her. Jayla's not scared of Meatball, which I'm proud she's not because I was I was hoping that this was going to be the outcome and that's what it was. But next week, we got Diamond and Body versus Dia. Dia, you're going to get your ass beat. And I'm totally rooting for Diamond to beat your ass. Big Kiva and Tink fight. That's going to be interesting to see. Nunu and Dia again. Nunu probably going to tag her ass up again. Natalie, then, this is what I'm talking about with the, uh, the Biggie thing before. She's saying she feeling some type of way because Biggie did not want to hang out with them, but she wanted to go hang out with Tommy and not her. I said, did you not just say out your mouth that you, the reason why you don't fool with Biggie is because you know that she fools with the eye? Biggie told her yourself, she told you herself that she was going to go hang out with Tommy. Why are you mad? Why is that an issue? She don't have to be up under your ass. Like, I like the fact that Biggie is not up under your ass which is, I'm, I'm glad she's not because that's what I said last season at the beginning of the season as well this season, that if she does continue to be up on her ass, I'm not backing Biggie no more. 
But Tzatziki and Jellybean, they fight and they finally go out. So that was a lot. <laughs> that was a lot. But uh, let me know y'all's thoughts. I know y'all got a lot. There's probably going to be some controversial ones. Like I said, keep it respectful. If you don't, you get blocked. It's just that simple. But please thumbs up the video. Drop the comments down below. Subscribe if you are new. Turn your post notifications on. Myself, Movie Bay, Most Likely Legend. We'll be um, live tomorrow around probably 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. But turn the post notifications on so you'll be notified when we're there. If you want to call in and talk to us, we're going to be doing that as well. But I will see y'all then. Peace.